Welcome. Welcome to Meet the Grads. Um, today, we are going to be focusing on the uh, broadcast television communications media, and we have an incredible panel here uh, to talk about what's ahead and what was ahead for them when they graduated. So here we have, um, uh, we have Brendan Nicolau. Is it, am I pronouncing that correct? Yes, yes. A few, few get it the right on the first time. Oh, excellent. So, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, no one gets my name right the first time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, anyway, so uh, here we go. Uh, you graduated in 2006 and you are now with Cable 14, which is an amazing success story uh, of, of, a, you know, of a channel here in, in Hamilton. Uh, graduating from Mohawk College's broadcast television and communications media program in 2006, yeah. Brendan got his first television job with Rogers TV in Toronto as a master control operator. In 2009, he came back to his roots in Hamilton to begin working as a technical coordinator with Cable 14's mobile department. After several years with the Cable 14 team, Brendan has grown into his current role as senior producer, technical support, which has had which has him working on a number of television productions while taking technical lead on some of Cable 14's larger projects. That's, wow, that's great. Wayne Snow, here we are. I pronounced that Hello. right. Hello, yeah, you got that one right, yeah? yeah that's an easy one. Because <laughs> I know the Inuit would have many different words for snow, so I do want to make sure I got it right. <laughs> no, you got it. Okay. Um, graduated in 1999, and now you're with uh, Bell Media. Um, Wayne graduated from Broadcast Television Communications Media Program at uh, Mohawk College in 1999 and started his career in master control at Bell TV. In 18 years at Bell TV, he's worked in various roles, including NHL events coordinator, senior manager, broadcast traffic, and operations manager for Five TV, video on demand operations, and multi platform support. Wow, talk about 21st century, man. That's great. <laughs> um, in 2018, he made the move to Bell Media to his current role as Senior Manager, Digital Operations. His team in Toronto and Montreal are responsible for the, for the ingest and delivery of all Bell Media video on-demand uh, content to the digital app footprint and cable satellite partners across Canada in both English and French, Crave, CTV, TSN, Super Ecran, uh, Nuvu, et cetera. These are, I mean, wow, these are all like the, the big ones. Eh? Um, his team in Montreal is also responsible for closed captioning, described video, content translation, and editing for broadcasts in all French content. In addition, uh, he also leads the support team responsible for incident management, triage, and change management for digital and broadcast environments across Bell Media. Fantastic. Yeah. And Andrew Doherty. I'm spelling that right. I'm pronouncing that correct, I assume? You nailed it. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> um, I, I, you'd think I've been in this country my whole life. Um, <laughs> Andrew is the supervisor broadcast operations at CHCH TV. He began his career at CHCH TV in 1997 after graduating with honors from a broadcast television and communications media program at Mohawk College. Throughout his tenure, he has worked as a news editor, camera operator, and live truck operator for over 18 years. Three years ago, Andrew was promoted to his current position where he supervises camera operators, the news editing department, as well as control room staffing. Andrew will celebrate his 24th year work anniversary coming this June. That is truly amazing. That's- uh, Thank you. Um, Tina Allmark, uh, did I get that one right, Tina? You sure did, Atul. Excellent. <laughs> uh, broadcast, uh, television, 1993 you graduated, uh, CBC Studios. Tina is a senior manager of visual and design for CBC Studios in Toronto. In her role, she works closely with production partners to develop creative, innovative solutions for content production. Uh, Tina graduated in 1993 and um, 
uh, from broadcast television communication program here at Mohawk College. Mm -hmm. Growing up in a home where CBC was always playing on the radio, my home too, um, or television was the fuel that sparked her lifelong passion for broadcast, uh, for public broadcasting. With a professional background firmly rooted in live multi-camera production, Tina takes pride in leading a team of skilled technicians and designers who play a key role in presenting content that informs, enlightens, and entertains the nation's diverse population. Her top priority as a leader is creating an inclusive and equitable space for everyone to flourish. When Tina is not at work, she was raising her family in Oakville, Ontario, trying to listen to as many podcasts and audiobooks as she can fit into her day. Wow, that is, uh, again, um, very impressive work. I mean, uh, where would we be without the CBC? You know, fantastic stuff. All right. So um, now I guess what we will, we, what I'd like to do is start to uh, go across the panel with the common questions for all of you that I, we believe would be of interest to our students. And uh, let's start with, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do it in order of what I see on my screen and I know it's different for everybody. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to make sure that uh, I just wanna make sure that it's all very inclusive. And, and so I'm gonna start with Tina. And I wanna ask everybody the same question. And this, uh, once after graduating from Mohawk, what, was, how, what has been your career path? What, what steps did you take to get to where you are? Sure. So um, I actually started at the CBC in the summer between my second and third year. Um, there was a posting for some summer relief positions, and uh, and I was uh, I was hired uh, for a contract position. Um, so coming back to school after working at CBC, I think I probably learned as much in that you know four months of working in in television as I had picked up in the two years previous at Mohawk. So it really helped um, sort of set my path for the for the final year at Mohawk. Um, when I, when I graduated, I started at what was then CBC News World, what is now CBC News Network. Um, and it was a great place to start at CBC because it was the fledging, fledgling little 24 hour cable news station and students might not you know, think about this, but that was in the days before social media and the days before, frankly, the internet. And uh, Canadians uh, relied on television and 24 hour channels for their news source. We were the first 24 hour uh, news source in, in Canada. Um, but because we were this little offshoot of CBC News, we uh, were able to, I, I was able to learn all of the crafts um, when I was a, a technician in news world and I was a switcher and I worked as a font operator and I learned teleprompter and I learned like all of the all of the jobs which gave me a really good you know grounding in in technical control room and studio operations which I think has really laid a groundwork for my success in the industry because I have those technical chops and I did that for so long um, I did all the shifts and I did the overnights and I did all of the live broadcasting so um, you know when I moved um, into a more um, administrative and then management role uh, I think that really helped propel me. Um, and one thing I wanted to say too, and you know, because we're talking to students and people who are graduating, one of the things that helped me in my career was to not be afraid of, of asking for the accommodation that I needed. Um, so for example, when we started a family, this industry is not conducive really to raising young kids or you know, having a young family. Um, and we were able to um, figure it out by by basically asking for accommodations that we needed. I think I was one of the first people at CBC to actually take advantage of job sharing, which had been written into the collective agreement a few years prior. Um, so we were able to, you know, have a young family, raise our kids. I stayed in the industry. I didn't, I didn't disappear from the industry. I didn't have to step away for a couple of years. Um, and so that helped. Um, so then from, from my technical uh, you know, beginnings, I moved into a more administrative role where I learned about crewing and scheduling and resources, and then moved into a management role probably about 12 years ago. So for the last 12 years, I've been able to make probably my greatest contribution at CBC um, because I'm able to um, bring new people into the industry, bring interns into our building, and really shape the future of our workforce, and it's been incredibly rewarding. 
Fantastic. And that's a nice bit of advice there. I mean, um, I know that uh, many people will would often feel, um, you know, uh, a little inhibited to ask for these kinds of things. And that was a nice bit of insight there. And, and um, now I want to ask the same question to uh, Wayne Snow. Um, upon graduating from Mohawk, maybe you can uh, walk us through your career path. At sure. Your so I'll, I'll say off the beginning that I, that I think that and this might be common for everybody is it never goes in the direction you think it's going to go in. So I, I had a weekend to decide between full-time master control Bell TV and uh, uh, sort of an intern for Hockey Night in Canada for the playoffs, which was kind of my dream. And went <laughs> with my parents in my ear, decided that I should take the full-time job. So I ended up at Bell TV and I've never left Bell. So uh, it never goes the way you're th you think it's going to go. But uh, yeah, so I, I started uh, uh, to Bell TV and Master Control and moved through, you know, some different positions. I like to move around. That's if that's the advice you get from me uh, this time around is I like to be diverse in my skills. I don't like to stay in one place for too long. So I moved around quite a bit in the first 10 years in um, sort of a, some master control type roles or coordination roles um, in live in live street or live events for NHL and and. Uh, then in the second half of my career, I've taken more of a leadership path. So I ended up managing, managing some master controls, uh, stepping out of my comfort zone to take on some more digital support teams. I'm not an extremely technical person, but I started to realize that, you know, managers are not necessarily supposed to be the experts in all this stuff. And I felt better as a coach and better as a, as a team lead. Um, and, uh, you know, finally made the jump to Bell Media. I felt like I was kind of maybe hitting my ceiling at Bell TV. It's not a giant part of Bell, but I thought there was more opportunity for me at Bell Media. And I wanted to, you know, finally kind of circle back to television in some way because I wanted to get back to where the production was. Um, and not that I'm necessarily doing that now, but I, you know, I, I, I got a little bit closer to what's happening. So working on, on this Crave stuff and all the ingest stuff that my team does across the country has kind of made me feel a little bit closer to what I went to school for um, in some ways, but um, yeah, that's kind of my path. It's, it's, a, it's a strange one. I thought I was going to, I remember my first interview at Bell TV, um, Pat Hansen had given me an award for mobile production and I had that on my resume and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And I, I put it in front of the Robert Peter, who was, who was interviewing me and he looks at it, he goes, Oh, you want an award for, for, for mobile production? I was like, yep. He goes, we don't have a mobile. I was like, Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so it was worth nothing at that, at that, in that interview anyway. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of how things went for me. Uh, that's great, uh, hilarious story. Uh, uh, I wish Pat was here to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, great, uh, Brendan, can you give us a little walkthrough from uh, your time after graduating? Sure, no problem. Um, the funny thing is, my story has a little bit of Tina's story and a little bit of Wayne's story in it at the same time. So, uh, much like Tina, um, I started. Um, applying for jobs before I graduated, I figured why not get a head start? And I actually got my first job with Rogers TV in their master control department um, while I was in my last semester of school. And uh, Mohawk was fantastic at working with me to be able to finish the school year while working. Um, I was working part time at that point, but while getting my hours and uh, um, uh, getting my hours at Rogers and making sure I finished uh, school properly. Uh, so I was with Rogers for, I think, a very short time, year, just a year and a bit. And um, uh, I was there part-time. I was doing full-time hours, but I was only guaranteed part-time. <clears throat> so I wanted to make the, the jump to a full-time position. And I started working with uh, a company called Mass Tech. And there's a common theme here where how I found out about this job at Mass Tech was through another Mohawk alumnus um, and Mass Tech had a partnership with the uh, broadcast department at Mohawk. Um, so I was with them as a, a product trainer and they provided um, at that point master control environments uh, with hardware and software uh, for digital asset management. They were early in that game and um, they, were, they were doing pretty good. And I was there for a couple of years. Uh, I traveled all over North America. Um, if a station bought our stuff and wanted to use it, they hired me as their, their product trainer. And I got to go. So I got to see lots of North America. Um, it was a little exhausting, but uh, it was, it was really interesting. Um, 
but I really missed production. My, 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 my heart was in production while at school. Um, much like Wayne, I, I, I was very close with, with Pat and I did just about every mobile I could do, especially sports. And, um, when I was there, we were lucky enough to be working with the, the, the Hamilton Bulldogs, the AHL team. And I think I did every game for about three years. And, um, I really missed that. I know it sounds silly, but getting dirty and hauling, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, so I really wanted to get back to that. And when, uh, the job for essentially that job at cable 14 opened up, I jumped all over it. And, um, I got there in 2009 and I've been there now, um, what, 12 years, uh, coming up on. So, um, and at cable 14, I've, I've grown from a mobile tech to now one of two senior producers there. And, uh, I've gone through just about every style and, uh, of production possible, uh, there. And, um, and yeah, that's where I'm at today. I'm, uh, funny enough, in my role at Cable 14, working on some of the more uh, major productions we do, we have a lot of interaction. And I interact with Andrew quite frequently up until recently, uh, whenever Cable 14 and uh, CH try and work on something or share, share signals and stuff like that, uh, or, or co-produce um, events, usually around election time, um, we spend a lot of time together. So uh, yeah, that's my common thread here. <laughs> wow, that's great. Wow, what a, that's a, again, a, a nice uh, eclectic and fun kind of background that you, you uh, have been able to enjoy in your journey so far. Um, Andrew, uh, maybe you could uh, uh, walk us a little bit through your career from the time you graduated. Sure, I think we're all gonna blame our careers on Pat Hansen now. <laughs> 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 blame everything on it. Just blame yeah, everything. exactly. Uh, no, the funny thing is, I I was just finishing. I also have a, an honors diploma in broadcast journalism as well, because I thought I was going to go on the, the on camera route. Um, I decided I fell in love with uh, with shooting news and stuff like that, so I decided to kind of flip over. So that kind of with the exemptions I was afforded from my previous courses, I was able to go out and, and start doing freelance work and and uh, basically going to school at the same time. So, um, so the, I, I basically bugged my boss, whose chair I occupy now, for about three years while I was in the television broadcasting uh, course. And because I, I knew that this was the place I wanted to work and this is what I wanted to do. And I knew what I wanted to do from the very start. Um, and that was live television. So, uh, I got a call, I think it was on June the 17th at about six o'clock in the evening. And it was my boss, Chuck Harris, my then boss, Chuck Harris. And he said, if you want a job, you'll be here at four o'clock tomorrow morning. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so I showed up and of course the person that was supposed to train me called in sick and I didn't know what to do. And so um, yeah, I worked, I worked in the editing department and loved doing that, but my passion was always more shooting, uh, shooting news than anything. Um, I went on to become a camera operator and I did that for a short time and then really found, uh, an interesting passion in live news shooting. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of a different beast in the sense that, um, every, everything that you you see and think you have to pre-think it in order to make that flow properly um, in a visual sense and in an audio sense so I did that for about 18 and a half years and then my boss my now boss Wayne Rabishaw uh, said that this position was coming up so now I'm not doing any of the above um, but I'm very proud to work alongside some, probably some of the greatest uh, people in my opinion. Uh, we're, we've always been a very family or oriented uh, kind of crew. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. That sounds completely awesome. I, I'm, I'm a fan of CHCH News and, and, I, and CHCH as, a, as a independent, as an independent station, it's, it is, uh, actually a really big part of Canadian history. If, uh, 
something to be very proud of that's here in our city. Um, now, I want to uh, ask now, we, even though it's one big industry, each one of you have different functions, different areas you're in and different companies. So I'm hoping that we can now talk about, because yes, you all have technical training and you have technical abilities, but maybe you could outline a little bit more about what are the soft skills in your particular profession or in your company that you're working with that above and beyond your technical training that's helped you succeed? Because all of you have risen, you know, you've had a really great trajectory in your career. Where, what are the soft skills that helped you in that rise? Tina, thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, we call them soft skills, but they're hugely important skills, aren't they? Right? Being curious is, is one huge, uh, if you are a curious person and you ask questions and you listen and you are genuinely curious, you will learn so much more um, than, than the incurious, as I call them. Um, you know, being a good communicator is very important. It's 2021, we are all uh, digital, we are all online. Being articulate and being a good communicator is incredibly important. Now that I've said that, I'm going to stumble over every word I say next. Um, and then, I, you know, I think just being curious about media in general, not just your own industry. So being tapped into what's going on around you, I think is really, uh, it's really important. And be, you will be recognized as somebody who, if not an authority on one thing, then certainly knowledgeable about many things. And I think that's really important. Awesome. Awesome advice. Um... Um, uh, Wayne, uh, what sort of, uh, again, soft skills, well, how would you describe uh, the yeah. kinds of skills that you would write? So, so I'll, I'll maybe circle back to, you know, my, my initial kind of when I talked about how I came through is, is one of the things I talked about was how much I've changed positions and changed roles. And I would say adaptability is, is extremely important. Um, if you've gotten too comfortable in your role, it, you, you, it's you're probably time to leave, right? So I, I, I've learned that pretty quickly. I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time sticking my nose into other roles and under, trying to understand them and learning them and then eventually maybe moving into them or maybe not. But um, you, you can't, you, if you think you're going to stay in the same place your entire career, not expect everything to change around you and maybe not be useful anymore, you're in trouble, right? And we've seen that, you know, not to get into, you've seen that at Bell Media, you know, in the past six months, um, there's a lot of change happening. Uh, a lot of that is a result of a lot of change that's coming down the pipe. Um, so you have to be adaptable. Wow, oh, great. That's, uh, and, and your, your resume certainly reflects that. Um, so we got curiosity, we've got adaptability. Brendan, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Um, one of the biggest soft skills I think that I've uh, developed um, in, in the industry is um, education, both sides of it. The ability to educate and, and to continue being educated. So um, an example of that is at Cable 14, we're heavily volunteer and intern based. Um, and we have a lot of high school students, like the main guts of our productions, the crews are, are, are 15 and 16 and 17 year old kids. And um, it, it's a big part of my job to try and teach them um, what I do or what I need out of them. But then in the same, same breath, as time's gone on, I'm learning a ton from my interns and my co-ops because, um, and I don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole here, uh, but to piggyback off of Wayne's comment about adaptability, when I graduated in 06, I was the first group at Mohawk to start nonlinear editing, right? So like I learned on analog tape and we're so far beyond that now and it's happening it's changing so quick i think about the main format changes from the time television began until the time i went to college and there was like three or four changes we were black and white and then it was color and then it was digital and then since then it's been hd 3d 4k 8k right and then now people aren't even producing for television anymore you're producing for web right which is a totally different totally different world so um, the biggest thing for me is the ability I've learned how to educate, but um, it's, it's a skill that it took me a while to, to, to realize I have to start learning from 
these kids as well. So um, every semester is, is a new experience for me. And um, I think that's really helped me grow in my role, to be completely honest. That, that is awesome. I, and I relate. Honestly, I do relate. I mean, <clears throat> um, so we have curiosity. We have um, adaptability. We have each one teach one. And Andrew, uh, what would you add to this, uh, to the soft skills conversation here? I think the biggest thing that I would add would be communication. Um, I'm, I know in my, my daily life, I have to speak a whole bunch of different languages to editors, to cameras, to live truck operators, to control room staff. And I, I have to speak their language and they have to understand um, my expectations and sometimes accept their expectations as well. Um, so I think communication is a two-way street. You know, I've, I've always said I have an open door policy to, I have, I have a staff of 21 people now. Um, and, you know, sometimes they're not having a great day or something may be happening at home that's affecting their position. You know, being able to communicate that and have someone come into your office and feel comfortable communicating with you that's saying, hey, you know what, I'm not having a great day or you know what, I'm having a great day. Uh, I think that's hugely important um, in not just from a technical sense, but from a personal sense as well. Great, um, I, again, that's those communication is so important. Well, wow, those were all just, I couldn't have asked for better answers. It's just fantastic, thank you. Um, now, uh, as Brennan has talked about education, I, I wanna, I want to ask you, uh, as the industry changes radically, and you've all mentioned this, and and you've all thrived, did you ever have to, after graduating from college, did you have to go back for additional education to keep up with things, or is it something that you learned on the job, or were there courses you had to take, anything like that? It's, um, maybe you could, uh, Tina, you can start with uh, letting us know what, what happened in terms of uh, any further education you might have had. Yeah, and I've been lucky to be with CBC, I think I'm about 28 years now. Um, the key in any organization is to take any training that is being offered. Absolutely take any training that's being offered to you, uh, not just your mandatory training. Um, but the answer to that is yes, because as Brendan mentioned, we've gone through so many iterations in the last 28 years that I've been at CBC that they've had to almost do a fulsome retraining of of um, staff in order to keep people um, up with the technology. Um, and something that um, you know, we're really focusing now, and I think it's important to talk about in our industry, is to talk about training around inclusiveness and diversity. And you know, you know, all of the conversations that we were having this summer, we can't let those end and how much learning we all have to do. Um, and so that's really been a focus for me over the last probably uh, six to eight months is um, learning as much as I can um, about how to create a more inclusive environment. And uh, there's so much out there. Um, it's not just what's being offered by your organization or what you can find online. There's, there's all kinds of um, great training courses and ways to learn. So yeah, definitely always be a learner. Awesome. Um, yeah, seems like it's a, it, it seems like it's one of our purposes in life is to keep learning. Wayne, did you have and now you you're you've got such um, again, you you're like right on the forefront of of uh, broadcast technology now. Uh, did you have to go back and take courses and things uh, for, for myself? I, I, I won't dive too much into what I've done because it, it kind of, you know, it's not really relatable maybe to the graduates because I've gone in the leadership direction. So I'm doing a lot of learning how to, you know, lead teams and lean leadership and all that kind of other stuff, right? So, but I can tell you what's happening with my with my teams and what's happening to them as the industry changes around them. You know, I encourage them strongly to, like Tina said, if there's training available or if there's some piece of new equipment that comes in, don't be scared of it. Don't, you know, don't shy, say, no, that's, that's the future. I don't need to know about that. Get your nose in there, right? Learn it, uh, get on it. Be one of the first to get on it, right? Follow your engineers around the plant. I used to do that when I was at Bell TV. When they were working on something and I was just a master control operator, if they went back to fix something, I'd follow them back and, and learn about how they were fixing something that I was reporting to them, right? So not that I know any of that stuff, but you know, I was there, I watched it. But I mean, uh, you know, when, when that stuff is offered to you, like try and, try and see what's coming and then stick your nose in there, right? My, my team is, 
Uh, some of my teams are learning how to code now, which is weird. They're broadcast television students. They're learning how to script. They're le learning how to write Python. You know, and, and I know that's more of a skill that, that, that younger people, younger than us have. Maybe a lot of graduates have those skills already because we're teaching them in school. But a lot of the guys that I'm on my team didn't have them. Now they have to have them. Right. So I would say like Tina, just like she said in the beginning, be curious, stick your nose in there and, and learn this stuff as it's as it becomes available to you. Great advice and, and good stories. Brendan, a guy who likes to learn. T tell us what was your learning path? Um, funny enough, as I say that, I haven't taken any official courses or anything since school. Pretty embarrassingly, actually, because it, it is something that you should keep up on. But as we as I say that, um, I'm very fortunate uh, where I work that they encourage uh, and they're very supportive of, of further training. And uh, just literally a few weeks ago, I spoke with my uh, my supervisor there uh, about um, looking into some IT training because that's that's a that's an area where I'm um, I don't have a large skill set, and I sound like I'm echoing Wayne again here, but that's and I talked about all the iterations. That's the next one. Everything I I came up in the world of SDI. The, no, no, everything's over Ethernet or wireless now. Uh, NDI, not SDI, right? And um, so I'm actually in the process of finding a course. I should look at Mohawk College uh, about getting a, a, an IT um, base of knowledge um, because that's where our, our next build is going to go. I've been at Cable 14 for a couple builds now. Uh, when I say builds, switch from SD to HD and HD. We're not doing 4K yet, but we have some 4K ready stuff. So I've had to be a part of that. The next one is IT and it's totally different. And um, just if, I, if I don't learn it, I'm going to get left behind, right? So um, my, my continuing education, that's, that's about to start. Awesome. And it sounds like um, <clears throat> you're all getting a lot of support from the places you work. Uh, to, to, they, you're, not, you're not shamed for not knowing it. They're just encouraging you to learn. That's correct? I can only speak for myself, but 100%. And um, they'll actually either... Um, I'm lucky enough that I'll get financial support for it, if not completely covered, right? Which is uh, phenomenal. So uh, they've always, always, always encouraged us to to grow in any way, shape, or form. So that's very smart business. That's great, uh, Andrew. How about yourself? Wow, the timing of this question couldn't get any big any better. <laughs> I can see Brendan laughing right now because he, <laughs> he's feeling my pain. <laughs> uh, we're actually. Uh, some of you may or may not know that uh, we're currently in embarking on moving out of downtown Hamilton up to the Dundas Waterdown area, um, building a, uh, a full NDI uh, station uh, news facility. Um, I went through the analog days, I went through the digital days, and, and now with NDI coming is just a whole different beast. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've taken about four different courses in the last three weeks. Um, and I've got another five waiting for me. And then probably some hands on training and stuff like that. And then we'll hand that down off to our operators. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a crazy time. Um, it's exciting. Uh, it's a little scary. Um, especially when you when you know back in the analog days a signal was there or it wasn't um, digital days is you know the signal was there or it was kind of there and not quite sure you know now with NDI and you know that kind of platform and, and audio and video over IP is just like mind-boggling of the power that it holds so uh, it's yeah I, I mean growing is a continual thing for all of us here Excellent. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask you guys a question about for our graduates, for our new graduates, uh, what resources would you suggest that they should have to find work in the field now? Um, that is, you know, what people do they go to? What places do they turn to? What would you suggest in, in today's environment? Uh, Tina? I would say do not sit at home and apply for jobs over the internet. You're not going to get hired that way. Um, people, people, people. And you know what? Don't overlook your classmates. They are fantastic contacts for you. Um, so use your contacts, use your classmates, 
look for an opportunity to be mentored or even better sponsored by somebody. And the difference is subtle, but it's there. You know, in a mentorship, somebody might help you informally, um, you know, keeping it on the DL. In a sponsorship, um, it is more um, known, right? That somebody w is bringing you along and that that is the purpose of having you there. Um, so uh, do reach out to all of your contacts, do use your classmates and, um, if you're reaching out to a hiring manager, um, sending an email, say why you're contacting them and how you um, got in, like how you got their contact information, and then ask about uh, a phone call. Don't don't cold call. <laughs> they don't have time. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so arrange for a, a phone uh, conversation. Awesome, awesome. Um, Wayne. Um, yeah, I would. Uh... Tina, every you hit a lot, a lot there for sure. That was all great stuff. Uh, the mentor piece was really, was really good as well. I hadn't thought of that, but um, a couple of things I would say is make the most out of your co-op. You know, don't think of that as I'm just putting in my. I'm not sure what it is now. Eight weeks, and, and I'm gonna sit in. A, I've seen people, summer students come in or, or interns, and they sit in a mass control chair for seven weeks and don't move, and then at the end they say, "Well, so do I get to stay now?" Like, no, like you just you didn't do anything, so get lost, right? So, I mean, I put in the time, like put in the effort, get your face out there. Like I said, follow engineers around, do what, like make the most of that time because you're 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 making an impression. And I know at Bell TV, I haven't done the summer pro, the summer program at Bell Media yet, but at Bell TV, they try and hold on to good people when they when a good summer student comes in, they find places to put them. So, uh, and the other thing is, and this is just a, this is not, not entirely related, but if you're applying for a job please change your cover letter. I know it's a small nitpicky thing, but I get cover letters that are for other jobs. So they're just reusing cover letters. And I'm telling you, when I put out a, a posting for a job, I probably get 50, 60 applicants and things like that. Those resumes get chucked, right? When I'm trying to narrow things down, if I think you're just blanket, blanket sending cover letters and resumes off to as many jobs as possible, you didn't even look at this posting. So that kind of stuff can get you disqualified. Work on, make sure that you'd have a good resume and a good cover letter. Yeah, excellent advice. Thank you. Brandon? Um, I think uh, the best piece of advice I could give, uh, I'm a little biased because like I said, Cable 14 is uh, intern and volunteer uh, driven um, and volunteering doesn't pay the bills, but volunteering, um, you, you gain very valuable, valuable experience. And I know that a lot of uh, people see on job postings, minimum five years, minimum five, volunteering counts uh, as, as, as experience because it is. And a lot of the times when you're volunteering, especially at your community channel, and I know I'm sounding, uh, I, I don't wanna sit here and promote volunteer at Cable 14, but when, when you volunteer, um, quite often you'll get put into a position that you, you wouldn't be anywhere near, um, if you took just the traditional, um, ladder route, if you will, or entry level job, move up, move up, move up, you're jumping up wrong. And again, volunteering, you're not getting paid, which it's hard. It's very hard these days to, to donate your time and not get paid, but you're getting paid in very valuable experience. Um. So uh, I, I couldn't speak highly enough about volunteering. You'll learn, you'll learn a lot. Um, you'll learn a lot and you learn a lot by doing so. 100%. And in this business, nothing more important than, than having them, you know, the time in, putting in your time and getting the experience. Andrew. I'm going to say it for Brendan, go and volunteer at Cable 14. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm deadly serious about that. Uh, I volunteered with the, the cable channel in Brantford, Cable 20, I believe, um, for about three years before I even got into television. And he's absolutely right. I, I learned so much and it helped me through, uh, you know, learning. And, and I think that's kind of where my passion started. I, I think my advice was don't limit yourself. Um, the last thing I want to do when I go into an interview is, is talk to someone who's applying for, say, a, an editor's position, but they want to be a live truck operator. Um, and that's all they want to talk about. It's like, you know what, let's, let's start, you know, let's, let's go through the steps. And, you know, you learn as you go along. You know, I didn't just land as a live truck operator um, overnight. Uh, it, it took 
learning and really understanding each position and how to bring that all together. And um, I think that's kind of what makes success. If you if you're, it doesn't necessarily just go for the technical side, but the on camera side. Like, I want to do sports. Okay, well, do you want to maybe write some news for a while or, you know it's it's opening up your mind to saying you know what i want to learn i love this business i want to learn about it and it's it's going to take me as far as i want it to awesome okay well all that is again uh, great advice man speaking of advice there's one last question now what was what is the one piece of advice or knowledge that you wish you had known when you graduated from mohawk Right. That's just, you got to think back a bit. And and now in retrospect of your career, what do you wish that you did know when you graduated? Uh, Tina. OK, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to address the young women in this call. There is a stat that gets thrown around a lot, and it says that women will only apply to a job when they meet 100 percent of the qualifications. That's not true. It's not a true stat. What is true? is that women apply for fewer jobs, 20% fewer jobs. So don't take yourself out of the running. Give yourself a chance, right? Apply. Because a job posting, a job description is a list of nice to haves. And you might not have all of those nice to haves, but you know what? You're trainable, you're smart, and they're looking for the right candidate. You might hear, well, you don't have the skills we're looking for, but that might not be so important. So that's my piece of advice that I wish I had known. Don't be afraid to apply for jobs that you might not think that you meet all of those qualifications for. Go for it. Don't take yourself out of the running prematurely. Great advice. In fact, um, uh, I was coaching my son on that very very thing when he was applying for jobs. Um, uh, Wayne, uh, what do you wish uh, you were told when you graduated? Uh, well, like I said I, at the beginning, that, you, you, that nothing ever goes the way you think it's going to go. And as much as I moved around in my career, I wish I wish I would have known to hustle more and try out more things. I've given that advice this entire panel, and I feel like probably the first eight years of my career, I didn't hustle enough and go learn enough things, right? So um, I wish I would have, you know, when I told that mobile story at the beginning of the of the this panel. We did get a mobile at Bell TV eventually. We had the first HD mobile in Canada at some point, and I could have worked on it and didn't, right? I wish I would have taken my own advice that I have now and jumped on that truck, right? Maybe maybe I would have gone a different path. I like where I am. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it, but I, I have friends in Dome and that work at Dome Productions, and I hear all the cool stuff that they do. And like, geez, I guess I could have gone that road. I just wish I would have opened my eyes a little more to everything that was happening and not just sat in a master control the first two years of my career. Cool. Okay. Um, but uh, granted, you've done extremely well, and and you you did pick up your curiosity as you went along and, and mm -hmm. did a lot of things. Uh, Brendan, uh, graduating, you graduated from Mohawk, and now you're looking back at your career. What do you wish that you? What was the advice that you wish you got? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this answer a, a little bit uh, off off track, but. Um, a piece of advice that I did get, and I'm, I got it from the school, um, and I took very seriously, and I, I, I can say a lot of my class, not a lot, but I can remember the classmates that didn't. Um, this industry is, it's literally a global industry, but it can be so small. And I don't know how many times I've come across people that you remember from a job you did, or school, or, or, or something in the past. And um, you really want to leave a good impression and that piggybacks again off of Wayne with the hustle and um, just gen being a nice person. Um, I remember um, certain students that d didn't care about that. I see it come through with co-ops and interns that will come in, do the bare minimum, get my grade and go. And then all of a sudden, the resume comes across your desk and you're like, well, no, I remember what you were like as a co-op, right? Um, so the advice was there and I don't know if enough people take that advice. So take that advice. It, 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 again, global industry, you can have amazing aspirations to, to climb the ladder here or there, 
but to do it, you're going to have to interact with a lot of people and you run into them over and over and over again um, in, in your professional career and people remember. So um, that, that would be my biggest piece of advice that I got, I took, and I would remind people to take. That's great. Always be your better self at any given time. Every moment is an audition. Yeah, very good. Andrew, uh, what, what piece of advice or knowledge would you, would you wish you had known when you graduated? I'd say be a sponge and soak everything in. You know, you, this, I mean, every, everyone on this panel right now it's, has gone through some great times, some bad times. And you know what, we've all come out at the other end because we have the knowledge and, and it, it took us forward. So I think that what I would suggest is, is everything that you do, soak it in and retain it and live and breathe it. And if it's important to you, you'll go after it. Fantastic. Okay. Well, again, I, this is, uh, this has all been very valuable. Thank you. Thank everybody uh, for coming out here and uh, talking to our students um, and giving such great valuable insights um, uh, for those who are about to graduate. All of this was just fantastic. And I, again, couldn't have asked for better.